suddenly your imagination in your bedroom as a kid playing with your toys uh, is now the real deal. I think it was Ralph Emerson said that the ocular dialect needs no translation. <laughs> I am not a bounty hunter. I've heard otherwise. Well, I just wanted to be better and uh, do the best work I could ever imagine possible and bring everything I can, a little bit of spirit. Uh, I think back in the day, I didn't know what I was doing. And it was 20 years ago when I was doing Django Fat and I got carried away with wearing the armor and I was having so much fun and getting to work with George Lucas and these ginormous sets. And I think I had too much fun. So this time I really, you know, a little bit more experienced and Ming and uh, both, we've both, you know, but had done a little bit of work with television and films here and there. So this was a great opportunity just to combine everything and feed off people like Dave Filoni, understand the storylines better, understand yeah. a little bit more about Boba Fett's history. Again, I had to draw a lot on our crew who were Star Wars uh, nerds and fans and nuts and know and all me. about the history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't know anything, I could always ask Ming Na because she was <laughs> the head of the Geek Club back in Pittsburgh. And uh, she knew everything about the backstory, even the grip, the guy pushing the camera. He knew more about Boba Fett than I did. So I was having these uh, pool of talented people around us that uh, made us perform a lot better. We wanted to focus on the work and just get, keep things moving, lead from the front as, uh, as the lead actors should, and you get a lot more uh, respect uh, from the crew. And, um, you know, we treat everybody as the same. It wasn't us actors and you crew, it was all of us. We were one it was a family. Uh, it was it was and, a tribe, a group. And, yes. And she's grandma, and I'm grandpa. So. <laughs> but we're very good looking. We don't look it. We don't look it. Very good looking grandparents. Yes. We don't look it. What prevents us all from killing you and taking what we want? If you had spoken such insolence to Java. He'd have fed you to his menagerie. Please, speak freely. First of all, the details were impeccable. And uh, I, I really feel like what they added to the little things uh, to sort of remind, they're just like these little Easter eggs that they put in. Suddenly, your imagination in your bedroom as a kid playing with your toys uh, is now the real deal. You know, the, 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 the throne room moves like it's supposed to. There is a trap door. Um, there's all these creatures and, you know, characters that have come back from the past. It's yeah, that was cool when we sort of got dragged forward. And yeah, the, I the love pushing that empty, button. Idiot, I, I, empty. I, would, I would constantly push that button, that little button that opens yeah. the trap door. So you cool. fooled him, you fooled him really good. We got the information, but not only that throne room, there was, for us as performers, you go from your changing room and into these volumes now, and yeah. the sets are so much more dynamic now. The, the uh, They bring them to life. There's even uh, extras on the wall moving Mm -hmm. in terms of the computer generated dimensions of these new sets they're called volumes now so they're very spectacular even just to walk on but yeah. by your lunchtime you kind of get used to the surroundings and then it becomes hard work but again just uh, being within that environment and uh, and john and dave just and robert rodriguez set a wonderful platform and yeah. you know it gave us a lot of confidence to to do uh, the best work we could possibly come up with so yeah. you're right in the, and we're all right looking the at the same things too you know which is great we're all reacting to the same things rather than our imagination or somebody screaming, okay, there's a ship coming this way. There's... There was actually a real... Uh, a real ship flying, yes. And I'm sort of going, what? The shark speaks English. <laughs> you, you can go a little crazy sometimes. And then the other guy with some other outfit starts talking back to you. So yes, yeah, uh, quite colorful, uh, some of the... Uh, 
the theatrical experiences we have with the different characters and, and the other elements that we have to work with. But again, we work with so many talented people that bring these things to life. So my, my utmost respect go to, you know, those people in the crew, the makeup, the prop guys, the people that make all these people. Animatronic, yeah, like Animatronic. the mayor, the mayor was ridiculous, right? Yeah, he the was- The poor guy from props, remember you got- the, Oh my gosh. You had to sit in that outfit and For remember hours. the lines. And For remember hours. the lines and move his hands. Yeah, so yeah. it was, uh, there were some yeah. funny days, put it that way. Jabba ruled with fear. I intend to rule with respect. I didn't want to say too much. And uh, I think it was Ralph Emerson said that the ocular dialect needs no translation. Ooh. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, that was pretty good, I thought. I've had stunt fighting training for so many years now. I mean, at least seven or eight with Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and then now doing this and one of, um, the most impressive thing I think is that people don't realize that stunt fighting is an art form in and of itself. And for it to look good and work, you have to know camera angles, you have to know rhythm, how to how to punch, where to punch. And I had an incredible stunt double, Ming Kyu. She's a wushu master. And I've been with her for over 10 years now. And she's been my trainer, my confidant, my ball buster, I, I love her to death. And, and definitely, uh, you know, she's, she's my incredible mentor, my sensei, yeah. Yeah, it was good to bring the Tuscan family alive in this series as well and find out more about their culture. And I work closely with uh, the stunt boys. Um, I was kind of blessed that growing up, we have our traditional kind of Maori dancers and we have one of our weapons, which is a staff and we call it the taiaha. So I was blessed that I was able to utilize some of those skills. But again, uh, our stunt team did a great job. And um, if there's anything too dangerous, we had a, you know, we have a double on hand just to do the dangerous stuff. But in the end, uh, they couldn't find anyone uh, quite good looking enough. So I had to really do all my own stunts. So, um, so I'm still recovering, but again, it was a, a wonderful opportunity, not only to show, show the drama side, but also that, uh, uh, grandma and grandpa here can still, you know, can still kick it along a little bit.